All right, Larissa, we're going to speak to you one last time. Um, we got a meeting with the prosecutor to decide what's going to happen. Um, I am going to re-advise you your rights. You do have a right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in court of law. You have a right to an attorney. If you can't afford one, we'll be appointed for you. Do you still understand your rights? Yes, I do. Okay. Some things have changed overnight. We did a lot more work on this. Um, we just have a few questions. At the When this all happened, did you have a cell phone back then? When this all happened, mm -hmm. yeah. I just can't remember what number I had. What kind of phone was it? I had a, it was the same one as my daughter, the Samsung Galaxy on five. What color is it? Silver and black. Okay. Did you also have like a Samsung phone with a white backing? Like a brand new one? Oh, I know which phone you're talking about. Hmm. That we found, my daughter had found that. It was between two phones that were in the house. There was a bigger one. Well, that this was, one was found underneath your back porch. Oh, probably my kids. Probably took it and threw it back there. Which kid? Um, I don't know. Probably one of my little ones. Why would they throw it? Because they play with it. Oh. It don't work. You know, we found it, and if we couldn't get it to break the code or whatever, my actually Mariana found it when we was walking to the gas station. So we couldn't break the code or nothing, so we just right. let the kids play with it. Okay. Uh, when I tell you some things have changed is we did talk with the coroner. Okay. And they finished their initial examination, and there were some problems. Okay. The problems being Jordan had an old left wrist fracture. His left wrist was broken at some point and it was healed. It healed on its own. How? That's something you need to tell us. Jordan also has three fractured left ribs that healed on their own and a fractured right rib that healed on its own. And these are all injuries that were healing on their own without medical help, which means he was in a lot of pain for a very long time and you're not being honest about what was happening to this kid. See, when what happened, I mean, I personally didn't, but I was scared of myself, okay? Scared of? I think talking to my sisters yesterday actually opened up my eyes a little bit and made me realize I should not be the only one taking full blame for this. I never put my hands on my kids. You can ask any of them. And a lot of people used to tell me, maybe that's why sometimes your kids don't listen. You know, sometimes I need to be more rough on them, but that's just not in me. To sit here and... I don't want to be that mother either. I, I just I, don't want to be that mother either. Right, I don't. I mean, I was like that right. when I was little. I can't be that type of mom to sit there and expect you, okay, my kid may do something wrong. But I see other discipline, you know, timeouts, you know, corner, you know, bedroom, you know, sometimes my help me girl worker even seen that herself. You know, no matter how bad my little ones connect up, I never had that in me to hit my kids. But I think I was just so scared because I used to get my ass beat by Chris just because I defended my kids. My daughter, my oldest daughter, my oldest son can tell you. My older son had a pull knife on him because he put his hands on me the way he did. How long were you and Chris together? About two years. Okay. And he was living with you from day one? Yeah. Right. Our understanding is that you were dating someone else who moved out and you met Chris online? I was with Jake. Okay. But Jake wasn't in the house for more than two weeks. Right. Since when and he I left and then Chris came in. Right. And you met him online? Yes. Right. So. If I could interject. Yeah, please. Um, so what I see happening is like, I think March of 2016, you were going through the process of trying to enroll Jordan in a class that's specific for him. And, and But is it Chris that doesn't want him to do this? Or is... Um, because... What I'm reading... I, no, I did try to get him enrolled in school and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Because um, what I read was Jordan would have benefited from an environment with children like him. He's He is autistic, most probably. Yes. yes. 
And what I did was, it was almost through the year. So they, when I talked to the development for the school, mm -hmm. I said, well, they either said, well, I could send him now or send him next year. Mm -hmm. I preferred that he would have started the following year, mm -hmm. so that way he's got a whole entire full year. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what my, you know, intentions was to send him to To school. put your kid at the front of the class yes. as opposed to the yes. I did the same thing with my daughter. Yes, because I wanted my son to actually be around other kids, mm -hmm. to actually learn and to actually, sure you know. Sure you want some coffee or water? I'll take some. Coffee? Yeah. Cream and sugar? Yes, please. And I, I was doing what I can, mm -hmm. you know, and... If you notice, none of my kids or nothing ever went through this until I got with Chris. I know. That's why, listen, Nina, I'm not trying to give you a hard time. I'm a mother and you're a mother. And, my and sister, I know you're My sisters made me realize that, you know, like. Mm -hmm. Listen, I know you, you had a horrible upbringing. A terrible. I know. So the most that we can do now is to, I, I understand where you're at, okay? But I have to, I have to press you on certain points. That's my I job. Understand. And it, it's, it's, as a human being, I know it hurts you. I can see that it hurts you. It, ever it, since day one, ever since everything happened, I just, I wanted to reach out. I wanted to tell somebody. I wanted to, the day it happened, the first person I wanted to talk to was my counselor. I wanted to tell her what happened just because I was just so scared. I needed somebody to confide in. Okay. And I, do, I don't have that support. When you say the day that it happened, do you mean? The, the same day? exact day. That, September 21st? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, I mean, I needed somebody to talk to. And in my heart, something told me that he did something to my son. You have to make a coffee here if you want something. Okay, thank you. In my heart, I just knew something was wrong. Mm -hmm. I just knew it. Like, you know, okay, if he can hit on me. And he can discipline my other kids, but he wouldn't discipline them like he did Jordan. Mm -hmm. How did? How does he discipline Jordan? It was just different. I mean, as far as you know how you said the sock in the mouth, none of my kids got the sock in the mouth, only Jordan. And I used to sit there and tell them, don't do that. You know, I used to get yelled at. My kids all can tell you I defended all my kids. And that's where a lot of me and his arguments came in because I did defend my kids. And that's where he would put his hands on me. He even put a sock in my mouth when I tried to yell for help. I felt like I was stuck. And every time something like that would happen, he would always bring up and make me feel like guilty, like I was the one who did that to Jordan. And I didn't hurt Jordan. Well, so what, let me just say this. We've seen pictures up until Christopher Rodriguez comes in the picture. He's a healthy child. he was child. healthy. He was healthy. However, for whatever reason, he focused on that child. I don't know what that reason was. If it and was he because, tried to keep everybody away from me. I yes. couldn't have friends. I couldn't have family. I couldn't have nobody. I, I may have missed this. Did he actually physically abuse him? Did you see him? A few times that I've seen, yes. Okay. And what um, what did he do? He would smack him. He would, I mean, I didn't, me personally, didn't see him fracture anything. I didn't, you know, I didn't, wasn't around or if I went to the store or if I, you know, went out with my kids so or you something. You won't see a fracture. You I won't, didn't. You won't. I, unless, that's why it shocked me. Unless because it's a compound fracture. Right, because I, my son had a fracture when he jumped off the uh, bicycle. He was on the bike with my older son. So I know, you know, like, I took him to hospital for that fracture. But, but a rib fracture? You but don't I, see that. But see, I wish I would, you know, it was just like Jordan trying to tell me something. When I told you that he, when he finally took his last breath, it was like he was mad. 
You know, like I seen in his face, like he just wanted to tell me something. But I just didn't know what that something was. And with him being speechless, I mean, I couldn't understand what it was. But I could tell it was just something so mad, you know, like angry. And I thought he, you know, like he was trying to cuss me out or something. But I, I took it as he was just trying to tell me, Mom, I love you. I got to go, you know. But in my heart, something told me that he had something to do with this. Because every time after this happened, I just hated him. I hated everything. I hated it. I just couldn't stand to be around him. Did you ever ask him to leave? I did. And he told me that if I was to call the cops, that he had the gas in his name, that they would tell me that he resides there, that he can't leave. So I just felt like I was trapped. And I even told him, this is my house. You have to go. But then he always threw up. Well, if he leaves, he's calling the cops and he's blaming everything on me. Which I didn't hurt Jordan. I did. I take the fault for not taking him to the doctor. Yes, that was my fault. And my uh, my other fault was doing. Tissues, right? Bring was, tissues, right? Was given the idea to do that, but I didn't hurt Jordan. I know. It's not in my heart to hurt Jordan. I know that. Do you know Jordan looked just like you? <laughs> he looked just like you. Same face. There was not one day ever since that happened. I never thought about it. I didn't know if you wanted cream, but... Because Jordan should... didn't deserve this. Well, you want tissues. Oh, okay. Please. He's... Jordan's not um, because we have your DNA. He's not identified yet. So I'm hopeful that later today he will be positively identified. You asked me if you could see him. Um, I, uh, I'm going to steal one of these because you're starting to get to me. I'm so, sorry. I'm, Hey, listen, and my sisters no made one me realize a lot. My sister, and I mean, I haven't talked to them a year. And they said, why are you taking the blame for this guy? And I admit in my past, that's part of one of my counseling. I've had bad, bad relationships and it's a pattern. Yeah. It's a pattern. And that was something me and my counselor was working on. And this just happened to be another one that just well he might have been the worst one yeah I think it was you do know we're gonna go talk to Chris have you talked to him at all during this time no no talk to him before you were put I, in jail I talked to him it was the same day you guys all came I mean not you guys mm -hmm. but when they came to the house and to me it just seemed like he didn't care what did you, you know, tell him? like I told him he was I, in jail at the time Yes, he called me about 6 o'clock that night, that evening, because that's when he got supposedly off of work from in the work or whatever he did in the kitchen. And yeah, he's like, what's going on? I guess because the detectives went to talk to him. And when they went to talk to him, I guess they were asking him questions. He didn't specifically go into, the, he just wanted to know more about what happened on my side. What you said. Right. So when I sat there and I told him, and he was just like, he didn't seem like I, like I was. You know, like I was scared, I was nervous, I'm, you know, shaking and spooked and, I, you know, he just seemed so calm. And, you know, like... Did he tell you what to say, what you should say, what you shouldn't he, say? No, no. That's why when you guys came and said, now he changed up his story to something about December 2nd. That's because he heard me say over the phone. He didn't know anything about what I told the police. But so when we confront him with Jordan's injuries, is he going to tell us otherwise that you're the one who did it? A woman can't do a hit that much harder. And you know what? Anybody can tell you that. And I well, say that. That's not true. 
I, I mean, he's a lot stronger I than I am. And me personally, you could even ask my older son. My older son yeah. will tell you, no, Angel. Angel? My older son will be the one to, if anything, between my older son and my oldest daughter. Do you know how we would get a hold of Angel? I mean, do you know that number? I, does he live on Wade Avenue with his dad? Or do they live someplace else in the first place? His dad moved. Um, I could try to get my little sister to contact uh, Angel. Okay. Yeah. Because um, Angel right now, she they message through Facebook, through Facebook Messenger. But I remember him leaving my my oldest daughter a message with a phone number. The oldest daughter is Mariana? Yes. But I don't even know if the detectives got the, her phone. I mean, I tried calling. She's not answering. So I don't know if the detectives got it for, like, uh, evidence or something like that. Yeah, I don't have an answer. I don't think they do, but we'll find out. Okay, because I've been trying to call her just to see how she's been doing. Um, well, I think right now she's in custody with foster yeah. care so I think right now it's probably her best interest that they keep the kids away from all this give them a break right. Christmas is coming up yeah. New Year's is coming up let them enjoy the holidays they're going through enough right now because we're going to sit down with Mariana and have a talk with her too but we're trying to give her some time to and can you guys at least her. tell her so that way she doesn't feel like she's scared she doesn't have to talk can you guys please tell her that you guys know that I did open up and tell them and tell yes. you guys. We will tell her that you told because us Because she's, yes. she's one, she's, she doesn't open up too much. And well, she's probably I'm, older than her years. Yeah. Um, she'd be more comfortable talking with, with Detective yeah. Remington? Yeah. Okay. Well, then we'll, I mean, not, we'll only, not only that, but at the same time, if she knows that mom opened up and mom, you know, was honest and told mm -hmm then she'll feel like it's okay for her to open up, that she doesn't have to feel scared that he's going to do something. Okay. So do you want to know about the children? About the, so they took, you have four older children. They, they I, split them two and two. Two and two. And the dad, one of the dads was just here yesterday. They came and saw me yesterday. Okay. But I um, kind of almost refused their visit, but I didn't. Just because something told me it would make me feel better. So the older children are one hour from the city of Cleveland. They, they're they together, two and two, in two different oh, the homes. the girls with the girls and the boys with I don't the know that specifically. All I know is that Erica Armstrong and Bill Rosier, I think, I don't know who that is. So they're in charge of their placement. That family is keeping them away from the television. So okay. they're not seeing what's going on. Ray and I decided that um, the state of Ohio mandates that DCFS talks with them in the first week. We decided between the two of us that in the first week we don't want to talk with them because I don't you wouldn't believe this based on our interview yesterday, but I spent 10 years in sex crimes and child abuse. I want to give your children a chance to decompress, to have normal holidays. Right, right. Um, and then to I get to let this, them, you know, pass over through the holidays. This is traumatic. And when they find out that Jordan is deceased, it will further be traumatic. So in their first visit, a counselor from Frontline will be with them and they will explain to them that Jordan is deceased and then Ray and I would like to sit down with Mariana because she's the oldest and it's my understanding, you can correct me if my understanding is wrong, she was close with Jordan um, and it's also my understanding that Mariana may have been touched physically by Christopher Rodriguez. No, not in my knowledge. Okay. Mariana, and I know that for a simple fact because Mariana was always with me. Okay. Mariana's a mama's girl. Okay. What she's you... she's never been alone with him. That's good. She's always, every time I go to the store, it's, Mom, I'm going with you. You know, so that for a fact, has I know. She, has she ever witnessed 
She uh, anything between you and Chris? No, no. I mean, is are you talking about like sex? No. Okay. No, none of my kids. Okay. None of my kids. That I don't. I'm not that type of mom where we sit there and make it. You know, I don't think you are, but but if he's a predator, in other words, if he's attracted to you because he's got a home with you, he's got somebody putting a roof over his head and feeding him, and he's really attracted to kids, then he's playing you to get to her. And well, she may be afraid to tell you that. Okay. As a mom, will you guys look into that for me? I, I absolutely will. I mean, because I personally don't think that but who knows you know and they always and I say that because I was mm -hmm. you know touched when I was little mm -hmm. when I was five years old by my foster brother my 18 year old foster brother and they always say if if it happened to you it could be possible it happened to your child and I just want to make sure that that's cleared well you I want to that. give her the floor to share that with me if it has happened and and she has a unique relationship with her brothers and sisters in that and I also said too because she her bond with Chris wasn't too too um Mariana's one she doesn't clinch on to everybody you know as far as males you know as far as mom yeah she's very close to that she's all uh, I've had, she's always been with me Dad's never been there, you know. She's never really had a father figure to step up and be that father figure, which she thought was Chris until the day Chris put his hands on me, you know. And it's just like that's why their relationship wasn't too until kind of like towards the endish, you know, like recently, to where her bond is okay, you know. It's not like. How far into the relationship are you and Chris before he puts his hands on you? I would say, because it's technically not two years until this February. So it's been a year. It's about a year, right? About? No. Well, I think, I think it's he comes into the picture in February of 2016. No, March. Okay. It came in March. Okay. It was 2015. Or yeah. 16. 16, because this is going to be 18. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, it would, be, yeah. <laughs> so it would be actually two years in March. Mm -hmm. So it's been, what, about a year? So you're a year so, in when he puts his hands on you the first time? When he finally put his hands on me the first time was when his brother came into town. And I'm the type where, okay, if you make plans, make a, you know, at least make them ahead of time. You know, you know, you, you knew your brother was coming into town. And if we have plans, you're going to stop our plans just to be with your brother. You know, and I kind of got upset because he said, oh, come on, let's go play some basketball. You know, it was, you can plan about our time. Mm -hmm. You know, now that we have our time, you know, we're... You know, kids are, you know, it's just family, mm -hmm. you know. And then when we do have our time, you want to go run off with your brother. And so, I mean, I just brought, I addressed it to him. No attitude, no nothing, you know, and he just got pissed. He just got real furious. Which brother? His, his brother, Scotty, the one that's in Pakistan or wherever he is. Um... He just got real pissed, started hitting me, and, you know, just literally that day he gave me a black eye. Um, Does Scotty know about this? No. I mean, every time, he, every time we got into it, he would always call his brother, but always make me look like I'm the bad one. So but he, would he knows his brother about But he family. knows his brother. Come on now. Sometimes he would get mad because his brother would defend me. So he knows, you know, like, situations that we've been through. You know, some things that he's always called them every time, you know, or talk about he's going to pack up his stuff and leave. And, you know, it's just, OK, then leave. I, I would have been more happy, you know, but dealing maybe all this would have been told and said a long time ago. You know, maybe that would 
but with him not leaving, with him threatening me, with him putting his hands on me, my it got so bad my son grabbed a knife on him. To and I'm sorry, I know this is domestic violence towards me, but I see it as self defense. He's got a scar on his back because sure. I did it. Just self defending myself because he went and literally choked me, put me in, in the kitchen slammed me against stuff, had a knife in my a knife in his hand. I found something I don't know whether it was a screwdriver or something. I just grabbed something and just got him right the out to the house. Somebody called. No, nobody. Right. Nobody. And that's what gets me is that street is so highly protected by police that why didn't somebody I mean I even tried to jump out the window. Try to get some help from somebody. I feel like I couldn't even leave my house. And then when I sat there screamed, he put a sock in my mouth. So I couldn't. And then was sitting there screaming, you know, like I'm um, screaming and he's sitting there choking me. Let me ask you this. Um, is he, what you described to me about Jordan, losing weight in his arms while developing a pot belly, that's malnutrition. See, you can, even when you talk to my daughter, that's why I thought something was wrong going on with his kidney. Okay. but Because my he was losing is, the weight, he was doing, you know, but... I'm not saying you did this. My question is, is that some sort of discipline that he does to this child? No. Does he withhold mm. food from him? No. There, that's why none of us ever thought it would have been anything like that. Me, I thought it was his kidney because he... When he eat, everybody eat. All my kids eat first. I served all, every single last kid of mine first. And my daughter and my son, anybody can tell you. When I cook, I cook big meals. Mm -hmm. And Jordan, he was one to always eat. Mm -hmm. Always. We get a pizza, he eats like five, six pieces of pizza. And you know what surprises me? Because he was like, where do you put it, Jordan? You know, like, I mean... He always ate. He that's why it surprised me when he started kind of losing his appetite. And I used to have to sit with him and say, Jordan, you gotta at least eat something. At least take a couple bites. Well, you know, because I never begin, had that problem with him. When does he begin losing his appetite? Um, I don't know the specific date. I mean roughly uh, like two months. Summertime, springtime, wintertime. I could say it was about late, I mean, maybe summer, early summer, you know, he started losing appetite. I got him to at least drink something. I don't, you know, like some behaviors were, I saw were uncalled for. Sometimes Jordan will wake up. I mean, remember how I told you, like with his rocking? Um, That's a signature. You, I, I don't mean to. No, he's always did that ever since right. when he was That's baby. sort of a signature of, of children who have spent time in an incubator or children oh. who are autistic, they will rock and self-soothe themselves. See, that's the first time I heard that. Because I even, self I even asked them. the doctor too, and I was like, why does he do that? You know, I guess. Self-soother. Because I wasn't there to, you know, rock him and cuddle mm -hmm. him. And, you know, until he was four months, That's just, that was what he used mm -hmm. to do. And then used to get up in the middle of the nighttime. I used to, like, he would sleepwalk. So I would, you know, sometimes have to keep an extra eye on him mm -hmm. because I caught him one time going to the bathroom, getting toilet water and drinking toilet water. And I'm looking like, why is he, you know, like, is he even alert when he's doing this? You know, it would be like certain behavior, you know, like, and I used to have to stop him. He'd go straight to the refrigerator. I don't even know if he's like awake when he's doing this or what, if he's sleeping or, mm -hmm. you know, it's just things that I had to watch out with him. Mm -hmm. And he would just like get into anything and everything. And I noticed that when he did it, even after Jordan was gone, my other son was doing it. My other little son, my four-year-old. And I'm looking like, is it because he watched Jordan do it? Or why is he doing the same thing that Jordan was doing? It's a good question. I don't know. I mean, is it a behavioral thing? I mean, it's just something that I, okay, I recognize that Jordan used to do that. You know, like, 
And it was just, it, and Jordan was perfectly fine. It was just something I felt like in that house too. Like it was not really wanting us there. You know, like a sense of something. And I guess the, I don't know if you guys heard about this, but I found out after I moved there. Because when I went to see the house, it had a caution thingy wrapped around it, kind of like on the front bush. <clears throat> and I looked like maybe it was just for a Halloween decoration or something. But the neighbors and somebody had told me that actually a father had killed his son or something happened there. So it kind of like, you know, like, wait a minute, you know, this house is just like bad luck, you know, and... I mean, Jordan's behaviors didn't start till we moved there in that house. I never seen Jordan's behavior act any different. You know, he, his behavior just changed. You know, it's just like I had to observe him a lot more there. You know, things that he was doing, I never seen him do. Well, to be fair, by the time you moved there, he's really developing. An autistic child may be a little bit delayed. Right, and he was three months delayed. He's probably even more delayed than that. Um, <clears throat> if if we didn't get him into school, but he's developing into himself at age three. So, is it a coincidence? I don't know. Is there something to do with this house? Perhaps. Um, but after Jordan, after you know the things happened with Jordan, my other little one, he was three. Mm -hmm. When he was doing the same thing, Jordan was doing. Right. Is it a coincidence? I don't know. Is there, obviously, you believe in spirits. I have went through a couple of things myself. So that's why, like, I mean. I believe in spirits, too. Good and, and bad. I've actually had one what of What kind them. of spirit is Christopher Rodriguez? He's a Roman Catholic. So. I'm not talking about I mean, his religious affiliation. Like, what do you mean? Um, he believes in St. Michael. Is he, he, does he have a good soul with light in it, or does he have a black soul? I say he's got a little bit of both. But when his anger comes out, it's, it's real nasty. It's, it's terrible. So he's, a, and, he's an angry black cloud. Yeah, I could say he went through a lot of things too in his life. But, I mean, I've never been with somebody so angry like that. I mean... Everybody sitting here in this room has been through some horrible things in their life. Right. And I mean, I even did too. But, I mean... But you didn't I turn them around to your kids. No, never. But never. the difference is, and this is my experience of 10 years working over there, those ain't his kids. Right. His You're mouth right. may say, these are my kids. Right. But his action speaks But more. at the end of the day... Right. That's some other man's kid. And if he's interfering with my time, with you... Right. And then, his thing was always, oh, you know, your baby daddy's going to try to come back and this and this and that. And, oh, that's my kid. And, you know, it was just... It was always just something with him. I mean, So he's, he's jealous? In addition yeah. to all that? He's a jealous guy? Very. Very. And that's one reason why I don't have my Facebook is because I get compliments about how pretty I am and this and this and that. And I, all I said was thank you. It was a compliment. That's what you say when somebody gives you a compliment, right? Thank yeah. you. Right. There was no conversation other than thank you. And I had to hear it. There was Male one, or female? Could be. There was one time everything was perfectly fine. He was sitting up in the room says that the ghost spirit in the house, the female ghost spirit that we have in our house, sat there and um, told him to look at my Facebook, looking about on somebody in the past. Let's see if our nine o'clock can set up the other one. It was somebody in the past that we never, we never did anything. We were friends. Okay. Nothing. And I got a kid. Listen, I, I have a really unique perspective into what your life is like. There's almost no female that I've ever met that hasn't had an unwanted sexual experience. And what those unwanted sexual experiences create are broken souls. So um, 
I completely understand the position that you're in. And if you want to continue this conversation later today, I'm happy to do that. If you want me to pull you back over here, I'm yeah. happy to do that. Um, I, I feel for where you're at because no woman should ever have to bury their child. And I think you did the best you could with what you had. But that guy was using you. And that's why I told my sisters, too. I said, if, if I ever get up out of here, I'm not going back. My sister says that they would help me get back on my feet, do what I have to do, because I was always, always had my own, always had my kids. My kids have never been a day without me. This is my first Christmas without my kids. At the end of the day, and, and, and I, I understand how you feel about if I ever get up out of here. I don't know what they're going to charge you with. My suspicion is it's going to be murder B. That's my and suspicion. And what gets me is he's not going to get charged for anything. Oh, now that's not going to be true. And um, it, that's not going to be true. And what is murder B? It, it's a um, <clears throat> it's causing the death of another without a plan to actually do it. And how much time and what am I really looking at? Can you tell me? I can't. Or just like a kind of like a. I would say, uh, honestly. I would say probably double digits. What's that? At least in the neighborhood of a double digit. Now, I don't know what happens later on down the line. And I'm not in charge of that. I can only tell you that I had one other scenario that was very similar to this. And that particular female is doing eight years. But I would su submit this to you. Were it me in your shoes, I would be thankful that my children are in homes where the adults can take care of them. This is not going to prohibit you from having conversation with your children. This is not going to prohibit you from having a place in your children's life. You will still have communication with them. And you have a unique opportunity here. It doesn't matter what you do to your children. They will always love you. The important thing here is that you tell the truth, all the truth, even the truth as they see it. You ask for forgiveness and you move forward. Christopher, and I promise you, I know you wanted to punch me in the nose yesterday, and I accept <laughs> I was, that. I was being sarcastic. I'm so sorry. You weren't being sarcastic. You were angry. I was just, and, and it's my job. But I'm not a fighter. It's my I, job to I, make you I angry. I think I kind of got off that way because I'm so used to, like, being, like, when the guys come at me like that, it just... It just, I don't know, it's just like... Do you understand that it, it's your eternal need to be with a guy that is attracting guys like that? And that's what I need to change. Well, and I and this is a unique opportunity to do that. It, to I have to do for that myself. part of you. Right. So kids who are touched when they're kids wind up either hyper-permiscuous or they wind up not at all promiscuous. It's up to you what you decide you were. But at the end of the day, both camps only feel good about themselves if they have a significant other. You have to heal that. You have to be comfortable with you. I don't need anyone else. I'm at peace with being alone, and, and that's, only that's when I'm healthy that's will I attract someone else who's healthy. 
And I can say that because I'm 50. And, and I've been you. There's a reason why I was so good at what I did across the hall. Do you understand and what I'm saying are. to you? You still are. You do a very good job. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? I've been you as a kid. As a kid, my life wasn't as... Not that you can compare them. Say it wasn't so gravy. But, but my point is, everybody has a story, right? It wasn't so gravy. But I had a good mom. I had a really good mom. And I don't think you did. And I don't think you had a great dad either. I really didn't know my dad. He passed away when I was five. I mean, I really didn't know too much about him. I knew my mom, you know, I got to meet her because I grew up in foster care myself, but I had got to meet her when I was 14. She gave up custody of all of us. We got lucky because we had a foster home that took all three of us, right. all three sisters. Right. And I, I seen it as they mistreated us too. So I can't say all foster homes and all adopted homes are the greatest. But they kicked me out and gave me back to my mother at the age of 14, which the courts told me that they wasn't supposed to. Mm -hmm. And it was court papered. And my mom was out there, drugs, might as well say prostitution, because she was out there. Um, and she didn't have a great life herself. Mm -hmm. And she had a horrible ending. Yeah. And so I remember everybody your, telling me that, you know what, hopefully I don't end up like her. This is your unique opportunity to change the end of your life. Because I could have been dead. Of course you could have. I could have been dead. And, and it used to get him mad because sometimes, I, even after the situation with Jordan, he used to get me mad because he put, me, put his hands on me and choked me. And I had knots in my head and I said... I, was, I just wish I was with Jordan. And he said, what did you say? I said, I wish I was with Jordan. I wish I could take Jordan's place for him. You know, that's, and he was just like, you know, cause he didn't like the fact that I used to bring him Jordan. Oh, you know, you don't need nobody hearing, you know, what happened and this and this and that. He would get pissed off. What do you think he did to Jordan? I think, that morning, technically, some, uh, I mean, something had to happen. I don't know what it could have been. Something had to happen because Jordan wouldn't just collapse like that. You know, I don't know if maybe he might have pushed him, shoved him, punched him, could have even punched him. Does he punch Who knows? him? No, I've never seen him. But I mean, if you're talking about any type of fractures, I mean, who's well, to say? There's a I big mean, difference between punching a child in the face where you're going to see the mark or punching a child. I'm going to interview the other one now. Okay. Punching a child in the rib cage and no one sees that. So what I'm saying to you is this guy's a street dude. He knows how yeah, to hit. Right. He knows how to hit somebody in soft places with a hard object and not leave mm -hmm. a mark. So, what did he put a kidney shot on that boy? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Who, who's to say? What did, say? what did he was pissed off at that kid for whatever reason? Puts a kidney shot on the good kidney, and it's and lights it's out. Shut down. Yeah. So now we could be very likely leaning toward a situation where Jordan was beaten to death based upon all these pre-mortem injuries that are in different stages of healing. And something told me, I don't know what it was, it's just a feeling that he had something to do with this. Because I not once 
ever. And as you've seen for yourself, pictures and everything, I've always posted. I, my kids were always healthy. I've always took care of my kids. Mm -hmm. I never hit my kids. Everybody used to tell me. Sometimes, even even the, uh, the officer at the house, he, as you can, he's like, maybe, maybe you need a spanking, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's not in me to do that. You know, when I was little, I got hit with extension cords. I got hit with boards. I got hit. I had a kneel on rice on carpet. Those are, and I told myself those are things I never want my kids to go through. Nothing. Hey, I don't want to be that mom either. That's horrible. I, I mean, don't want to be that mommy. I don't want to compel my child through fear. So, and I remember he always used to tell me, well, you need to discipline your kids and this and this and that. And it's just like, I'm doing my best to discipline my kids. What is his definition of discipline? His, I guess, is more like spanking and oh, I don't know what he considers discipline. Did you see him put the Sometimes, sock in Jordan's mouth and put him in a corner? One time I did, yes. And I didn't like it. I didn't. Did he make Jordan sit in the closet? Not that I know of, not that I know of, but in can't I'll say when I step out or, you know, something like that. But as far as the closet goes, I know my kids play in the closet. That's all I know. Mm -hmm. You know, my kids love to sit there and hang on the little bar thingy. And one time I caught my little ones just sitting on the shelf up there. And I'm like, what are you guys doing? You know, typical kids, Playhouse. you know. Mm -hmm. But as far as that, I don't know. But my children didn't deserve any of this. None. Well, and what I suggested to you yesterday is that the only way you heal yourself from all of this is to take responsibility for your side of the street. Meaning, if I drank, if I doped, if I didn't keep house, if I didn't put sheets on your bed, if I didn't feed you, if I was overwhelmed, if I didn't do my part to take care of you, then I own that. And no, just like I take the responsibility. I didn't take them to the doctor. That was my fault. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't call the ambulance when he needed it. That was my fault. Mm -hmm. I also had part in putting him there because I just had a baby. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and I'm feeling my depressed. I, I diagnosed with PTSD, mm -hmm. you know. And, and probably postpartum. And, you know, I didn't know what to do. You know, I just got scared. And I just was like, you know, and I wasn't ready to let Jordan go because I've been through so much with Jordan, you know, by myself, even before I got with Chris, I was taking him to the doctor. I was, I mean, it was a lot, but I was working on getting there because my work, I mean, my uh, social, I mean, social worker, my counselor has a preemie. So she was working with me yeah. on some things that I could do with Jordan. Well, let me ask you this. In, um, I, I don't know who Patrick Strawn is. My understanding from you is that this was a one-time liaison with him or a couple of time liaison with him. Yeah, and then I got pregnant and here come Jordan. And I didn't want nothing to do with him. He didn't want nothing to do with me. Okay. So I told him, I set him back and I told him, you need to go to Texas, back home where, you know, where you are. So, but my question to you is, not to cut you off, and I know you need to talk about this stuff to get it out. The law says that he is, he has a right to Jordan because he's the father. What that he never comes forward or we don't find him? He's not going to come forward. He's not. Then whom would you want to have Jordan? Michelle? My sister. My sister, and I talked to her last night. Michelle um, yeah. or Anna? Michelle. Okay. Because she's more responsible. Michelle's more responsible. She's more, she's the oldest. So in the absence of Patrick Strawn, you would want her to have Jordan's remains? Yes. And to, to follow through with what she wanted to do, which was a cremation? Yes. And to divide the, the remains between his siblings? I think that would be best. I talked to her yesterday and I told her I was going to let you know that, you know, because we all agree he's never been there. 
He never wanted no part of Jordan. And even on Facebook, I could even show you from old messages. You know, I sent him pictures of when he was in the NICU. Mm -hmm. I said I told him when he was born. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to tell him. Mm -hmm. You know, those are things that even I try to connect with his sister. I didn't get nothing from. Well, what if one. they come back and they do want him? Then what? I doubt it. I mean, but if they do, then there's nothing we can do. I hope not for your sake. And, and I don't your... mean personally. I don't think they will. I mean, they've never stepped up before. So I'm thinking. I we just got to think. I'm just gonna have my sister do everything until I mean until further notice. If he if he does come through, if he doesn't, I don't know. Okay. But do you have any questions for me at this juncture? No, but would I still be able to see him? Or no? So to at least say my last, you know, finals to him. Um, I mean, if I can't, I can't. I'll just, you know, say him in prayer or whatever to myself. But I think I just kind of need that like closure. I don't suspect that they're done with their examination at this point, um, and I think that probably they're not going to. They're probably not going to allow you that. Um, and I don't think that you want to see photos of him. You actually physically want to see your child. That's me at you. Is there any other questions you have for me at this juncture? Um, so they're going to go ahead and charge me today? Yes. I'm, I'm going to charge you today at some point, and you'll probably go to court in the morning. And then in the morning, we're going to talk to the other half of the equation in Medina County. Yeah. Good luck. Well, I don't. I really don't care if he speaks or not. And I want you to know that I helped to arrange the visit with your sisters. Thank you. That helped a lot. You can't go through this alone. And what I would say to you is I've had members of my own family do big chunks of time for some really fucked up shit. And they told me, Larissa, you've never had a record. You shouldn't even be here. Well, this is... And now I feel bad because my little sister, she's taking it hard. Well? And I know that she feels it's her fault. And it's not her fault. I assured her that uh, the other half of the equation will be held responsible for his parts in it. Because it's undeniable that when he comes into the picture that this child's life changed irrevocably. So, because um, I was in plenty of other relationships before him and nothing happened. I'll be right back.
unit right there. It's a car in the driveway. Stand right there. Ready to run this play. Frank, yesterday, Lincoln, 7437. Nothing looks disturbed. The gate is open. Coming back to somebody uh, with a warrant or something. Um, I have that address. I'm gonna start tapping on these doors over here. Doesn't nothing look disturbed over here, by the way. The address is going to be 4923 Ridge Road, 4923 Ridge Road, and the only phone number attached is going to be 216. Five five nine eight one one nine. Sylvester Sims. Yes, sir. Oh. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, the address is that at this digital function. Um, set from our. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Brooklyn. Four four one four four. Tap right here. Is it a door to the front here? Yeah. All right. 
Adam 11 and just for info. Go ahead. Per the caller, this is an update that we just got. Per the caller, getting to this child was possibly buried a couple of months ago. Okay, copy that. Uh, an update on our end. There's nothing in the rear looks to be disturbed, so uh, we, we have somebody at the door right now, so step by. Are there party kids here? Do you mind if you step in? Uh, okay. Do um, you have one of uh, the four five year old. How old are you? Four? Okay. Is it a boy? A girl? What? A little boy. Oh boy, what's the boy's name? Anthony. Okay. Um, let's see if you can get a name. Okay. Is there anything? Well, we got a call. Say, uh, want us to check on the on the uh, well-being of the uh, five-year-old, four to five-year-old. How many kids are good? Okay. What can we see? Okay, I believe you. Don't mind me. But I have more people out in my room. Okay. Okay. Negative. Just on the brother one, of Christopher right Rodriguez and his girlfriend, Marissa okay. Rodriguez. Let me know. Fine. Hello, kids. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Come on. All right. Apparently, Larissa has. What's your name, ma'am? Apparently, Larissa has nine other children and she told the other kids. Is there, I mean, Oh, hold on. Do you have any idea on that? Yeah. She said she has nine. It's it's like four in that room up there. Watch your walk. How many kids do you have, man? I have nine all together. Okay. But I have some that don't live with me. But these are the ones that do live with me. Okay. Where's Christopher at? He's in jail. He's been in jail. For child support. He's been in there since like October. Was he was he here when the dog bit the lady? Yeah. That was him, right? Is that him? Yeah. But he hasn't even been in there. He's been in the Garner County. Jennifer, do you want to head up to the highway to the 7222 with this car accident? That's why I was surprised when my son came down and said, Mommy, the police are here. I said, Huh? What's his last name? Huh? What's Christopher's last Rodriguez. name? Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. Is that your husband? No, we're not legally legally married. Gotcha. He's in jail in Medina. Yeah, he's in Medina County. He's been in there since October twenty fifth. October twenty fourth, October twenty fifth, something. Like that. Do you have a child with special needs? Oh, Jordan. Yes, I do. How old is Jordan? Jordan, he is just turned five. Where's but Jordan at? He's with his dad. He's visiting, going to be visiting for the holiday. He's not here with us right now, right now, for the holiday. Where's dad at? In Texas. He's not even here. Is that who you guys are pertaining to? Um, maybe possibly. What was the call mainly about? Just checking the welfare. Oh. I get, all, I get these all the time because I got ignorant ones who want to sit there for a long time. Do you know, um, uh, what's his dad's name, Jordan's dad? Patrick. Pat? 
Do you have a number to practically reach that? We need a list of all your A list? Yeah. <laughs> Can I get a pen? And sure. Paper? Or you could tell me. Here, I'll write it down First, because it's a lot easier. Okay. Firstborn, all the way down the line. Supposedly, Jordan is with Dad yes, in Texas. Yes, he's with Dad. Um, we can call him? Yeah. Huh? Right now, I don't have the number because he's just going to get a new number. Okay. But, but he's got family, so we can yes. talk to them. I mean, I don't know what this is pertaining to. Just, uh, just to the young, young uh, oldest to the youngest. Mm -hmm. And if you know the date of birth, put it under there. That'll be fine. How long have you been living here? I've been here about two, two years. Two years, okay. One, three. ones that they're probably talking about to is Angel Gilbert. I haven't had custody of them since years ago. Do you need that information too? Or? Well, you say you had nine. All your kids. Those? Mm -hmm. I'm only missing, okay. You got nine. Okay. You, you're a little short. A couple short there. Okay, I'm going to put the ones that are I don't have right here. Not custody. Okay. Mm -hmm. And where are they at? Where, Those, these ones are, he went to foster care, ones with the uh, grandmother. Mm -hmm. Then I have the other one who took, they took custody. Okay. So. How long you live here, ma'am? I've been here two. Two years. She said her name, he said it was the boy girl. She says the girl. Oh, she. She said Mimi. Mimi. You're, you're Mimi? No, that's Tati. Oh. <laughs> Do I have to pull over there? Uh, tell me something about Patrick. Do you know anything about Patrick? He stays in Texas. I mean, we were together for about two years. What's his last name? Strong. We wasn't together actually too, too long. He was mm -hmm. just like an internet thing. Do you know his, thing. do you know his, um, like when he was his birthday or anything? No. That I did not. You know, we... What's Jordan's last name? Rodriguez. He took it from me. You got a phone number here, man? 
Um, his phone just recently disappeared. Oh, my phone, 216 456 So who do you, how many kids, you have these children to live with you, mm -hmm. right? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six live with you. Yes. Um, do you live here by yourself or, or do yeah, you live with anyone? Yeah, technically I'm here by myself. I mean, Chris, okay. Chris comes and goes, you know, back and forth. Chris is the one that's in jail right now. Yes, he's been in jail since October 24th or October 25th. Okay. And that's in Medina County. Yes. Who was he arrested for? Um, he was arrested for child support. Oh, child support. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. How many kids does he have? He has one. One. And he's fifteen. Yeah. Oh, the other boy is fifteen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Okay. Um. Man, I would really love to get in touch with Jordan. Okay. Okay. Is there any way I can give you when I find the number to um, contact you? Yeah. I got two. Any of the kids disabled? Uh, he's not really disabled, but that's the one that's with his dad. No? No. Oh, what do you mean? He's just SSI. He don't he can't talk. How old is he? He's he just turned five. Oh, okay. That's the one. Where is he living? He's Texas. staying not he doesn't live there, but he's just visiting for the holiday. Um what in Texas? Yeah. Where he usually lives here? Yeah. Okay. What, uh, what, you got a family members in Texas? I'm gonna, that's why I said, is there a number or something where I can contact you guys? How long he's, has he been in Texas? Well, you can get it now, it's not a big deal, we'll wait. How long has he been in Texas? He's been all, only over there for a couple weeks. Because he goes over there to, you know, visit and stuff like that. Wait, wait a minute, he goes where to? Uh, no, no. He goes... Yeah. Sperm, he goes to, I want to say sperm donor. He goes to Texas to visit? Yeah. He's been, he goes there, he went there last year, went there this year. Okay. Because uh, he just goes to visit family out there. But I mean, other than that, he's here. So, so Jordan has, he has family members in Texas? Yes, yes. All right. Yes. Do you know any numbers or any, how to get in touch with anybody who actually lives in Texas? I mean, right now, his phone just got this. What's his address? I'm waiting for him to call me. What's his address? I don't you know. just didn't send the kid to who knows who, right? I mean, no. I mean, I don't know the address personally because me and his dad don't really associate like that. But you let him go with him, right? Right. He just had his phone disconnected. He's going to be calling me with the phone number. So, and that's the only way I can contact him. Oh,